This is Lee's Ferry. It's a blue ribbon trout fishery on the mighty Colorado River. It starts at Glen Canyon Dam and continues for about 16 miles through Marble Canyon all the way to the upper reaches of Grand Canyon. Some people tell me we have pretty good scenery. I've traveled around and fished lots of places and I have never seen a place with this type of backdrop that has great rainbow trout fishing. Seven wonders of the world, only one has trout fishing. Terry Gunn owns the Lee's Ferry Anglers Guide Service. You know, one of the neat things about Lee's Ferry that a lot of people don't realize, this is all wild rainbow trout fishery. I mean, there is no stocking that goes on here. There hasn't been any stocking here for, for 20 years, virtually. And uh, these are all wild rainbow trout. You don't find that many places. Well, the first question I normally ask everybody, but since you're with Game and Fish, I don't have to worry about if you've got a license. I have a license, yes. <laughs> With a trout stick. <laughs> a guided fishing trip at Lee's Ferry should be on everybody's bucket list. And on this breezy morning in early May, Jim Paxson gets to scratch it off of his. I've got to jump out here. He's going fishing with Tyson Warren, who's been a guide for Lee's Ferry anglers since 2001. Park the boat on the beach here. Keep the boat safe. Now it's been years since Jim touched a fly rod and he's never fished anything like Lee's Ferry. And here we are, it's a tough work day on the river. <laughs> you know, I was in Colorado for 12 years and, uh, and I did some fly fishing in beaver ponds. Fly fishing was pretty good, but I was not by any means expert. That's okay, because right. Tyson is an expert. And today he's showing Jim how to fish the Colorado River. Here we fish mainly underwater. Uh, we use uh, the food source up here, uh, basically consists of midges, which are little gnats, and they're waterborne. Uh, we have uh, San Juan worms, that's a waterborne earthworm. And we have a thing uh, with a scientific name of gamorous, but it's, we call it a scud. And we'll be using all three of those today. Water here is about 46 to 48 degrees year round. So this is our fishing area here. If it was a little warmer, a little less breezy, you'd see a whole bunch of little guys jumping on the inside here. And it's shallower, and these fish like to sit right on this seam here. So that's what we're gonna try to take advantage of today. We're gonna work on getting the line out, doing this, without disturbing the indicator. We're gonna try to get that indicator to go down the water without moving all over the place, because if it's moving all over the place, the flies underneath are moving all over the place, and the fish know that that's not real, mm -hmm. that it's not a natural state, and they'll ignore it. The goal is a natural drift, making that artificial fly look like real floating food instead of something tied to a line. line One way is to this. keep the tip of the rod low not when shaking line end. out. That way the current can grab hold of the line and do some of the work for you. All right, we're gonna throw it out again. Gonna put a little bit of a mend in there. The other technique is something Tyson calls a mend. Mending the line is a little maneuver that's coming up right after this cast. Here it is, a flip of the wrist that so keeps the line, the line floating behind, behind the indicator. It just ups your chances of, of getting right. that. Yeah, you're not, you're not moving the indicator in here. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's not moving across the current. It's going with the current naturally in the fish like that. So let's do a couple more of these before we load it up with some flies. Okay. okay, there you go. Jim spends a few minutes working on the techniques Push Tyson up. showed him. Do yeah, perfect. Throw a little mend in there upriver. There you go, beautiful. More line out, more line, there you go. Pretty, that's a nice drift. Then it's time to catch some fish. This is a midge in its larva stage. So we're just gonna go with one fly on there for now. Okay. That's what it looks like. This That's is a in huge the, hook. Isn't uh -huh, it? In the fly fishing roll, this is a size 18. 18. In some places that you will use about a fly about half that size. These are called thingamabobbers. Seriously, that's that's the brand name of it. Okay, whenever you're ready to cast. Okay. Okay, way high over your head and let it roll. You Go ahead and out. uh huh. Set. Fish on, buddy. Set. Oh, oh. Set. 
set, set, set. Okay. I, I missed it. <laughs> yeah. And I was way, way discombobulated too. <laughs> yeah, we were just about a minute too late on that one. Yeah, a minute. That's just all. <laughs> Other than that, it was okay. Yeah, there he is right there set. That's a push. Your batting average right now, you're 0 for 2. <laughs> The nice thing is you're doing this drift really good. It takes a lot. Some people, it takes them hours to learn this. It's not about catching. It's about fishing in it. There he is, Jim. Set it. So when you set. Yeah. Okay. Got to bring it up and keep it up. Huh? Yeah. Do a yeah. Statue of Liberty thing. Yeah. You really get, really get your hand up. Set. Set. Woo. Oh my. It came out of the water. That was a nice fish, fish too, wasn't it? That's that a big boy there. It. Yeah. Tyson kept telling me oh. that I had to be quicker and set the hook harder because there's so much line in the water. You know, it's a learning experience and and uh, just having him in an affirming kind of coaching way uh, develop my skills was, was really impressive. Time to move to a new spot. Okay. Well, hey man, you got hit a lot in there. Yeah, that was fun. Have a lot of line here. That water's really moving. We're seeing fish of all sizes. We're seeing fish from, you know, six inches long up and up to about, uh, you know, a two-foot fish is a real big fish for us. But everything in between, which is really indicative of a healthy river. Right now, the fish population is as good as we've seen in many years. Fishing's been really good here. Like, oh, get him, Jim. Oh, good eye, man. We almost had him. As a blue ribbon fishery, we have to use barbless uh, hooks, and we're using such small flies. It's really easy for the fish to spit there these. Set. So good. what we mainly try to really emphasize is just getting the technique down. But the goal here is, because of our catch and release uh, uh, practices, is not to touch every fish or to see every fish. It's just to have a good time, and if you're if you're, every time Jim makes a cast, he thinks he's going to get hit. Uh, see, that's how good the fishery is. A guy that fishes every day like me, I, I will hold on to more fish than Jim does, but that's just because I have more experience. But the fishery is so good here that, that even someone that comes out on their first day, even if you don't touch a whole lot of fish, you're still going to have a great time because you're always going to get hit. I got a fish. There you, yes, you do. Now take your time with him. Keep the rod tip up like that. There you go. Very nice. I can't tell. Oh yeah, you still got him, but boy, you sure got a lot of moss on there. You're about out of line, so now you just got to start lifting your rod and bring that guy up here. But that's a nice little female. You can tell a female because once they get into the 12, 13 inch size, their mouth is still nice and proportioned, and a male will start getting the hook jaw. Hook jaw, yeah. Start looking like a salmonoid. All right, well, we're going to release this. Oh, don't have to release much. He's gone. Yes. We're not skunked. Right on. Good for you, Bubba. <laughs> that was a good catch. There are fish in here. Yes, there are lots of fish in here. Love it. It was a gorgeous day, blue sky, a few clouds, and catching a fish. I mean, it was just, it was a kind of a once-in-a-lifetime deal. <laughs> <laughs>